Hey, hey, knitters. Welcome to episode 204 of the Knitty McPurly podcast. I'm your host, Devin Ventry. You can find me at knittymcpurly.com. I'm Knitty McPurly on Instagram. And if you want to email me, I'm Devin at knittymcpurly.com. Today, I am drinking coffee out of my New Orleans mug. Thank you. Thank you. My lovely Louisiana knitter who sent this to me. She also sent me a Louisiana mug, which is back there. I uh, pulled this out because it is early. That's why it's a little bit darker than it usually is in here. It's early today. Um, trying to get the podcast in. A lot going on. So I am still drinking legit my actual morning coffee. Happy Thanksgiving. You guys, it is like 20 degrees outside. So I am wearing my recently finished Go Lightly sweater, which you may have seen. Um, it's actually all exactly the same all the way around, but I like the the French tuck personally. So I knit mine with Dresden DK, which is Surrey Silk that is DK. I've talked about it at length on the podcast, so probably you already have heard of it. Many of many of you purchased some during the Black Friday sale, which is still going on. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but there are kits over on the website if you want one. Somebody just ordered one in River Rock. Mm, that's gonna be so, so pretty. So many good colors and Bosque. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be great. Anyway, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend, a wonderful Thanksgiving, great Black Friday. Um, we went to my parents' house. My dad's surgery went amazing, like amazing. Thank you all for praying for him because he's 77 and it makes me a little nervous that he's having surgery but uh, he had some discs fused in his back and he even right after the surgery, he felt so much better than he had for the past couple of years when he was in a lot of pain. Anyway, we went to my parents' house and it was great. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and got some knitting time in. Um, yeah, life is good, right? Okay, let's talk about progress and shop news. I would like to thank you guys for the biggest Black Friday turnout in Nitty McPurley history. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for shopping the sale. The sale is still going on. It'll be going on through Monday. Uh, some of the um, things that were new for this week are sold out. A lot of the balm is sold out, but I do think there's some left. I, I haven't actually looked recently but I do think that there is some balm left. If you wanna get it, use the code KMPBFS, Nitty McPurly Black Friday Sale. Use that code for 20% off through Monday. Um, and please be patient. Uh, the first like 100 orders that came in was all in stock stuff and those should, many of you maybe have already received those or you will very soon. Uh, but there were a lot a lot of pre-order um, orders and I have been working diligently. Like I worked 12 hours yesterday and today I'm gonna do my best. My father-in-law also ended up um, in the hospital this week and so we're going to visit him later today. So that, um, yeah, say a little prayer for him too if you would. His name is Lou. He's fine, I think. We don't exactly know, but um, there's that going on too. Anyway, I've been dying like crazy the good kind of dying, not the bad kind. <laughs> and uh, it's been great. It has been wonderful. It has just, I had a goal for Black Friday and I have far, far ex exceeded it, almost doubled it. So thank you, thank you for choosing my shop and thank you for your patience. I do hope to get, uh, I could realistically get all of the pre-orders shipped next week. That is what I want but it's a lot, it was a lot of, it's a lot. So thank you, thank you. Anyway, if you want to pre-order a kit for this sweater, you can find that on my website. We talked a lot about the Timbo vest. I'm gonna talk about that too in a minute. Um, kits are available, so go grab one if you want. Let's talk about the Sock Club. Sock Club went up yesterday at noon Eastern time and about a hundred of you set a timer. So. The people who really wanted it went and they got it. Uh, I think 75 of them were gone in five minutes. In the, in, from 12 to 
it was almost sold out. And then there was like 40 minutes where the last couple went. So I felt like if you really wanted it, you set an alarm and you went in and you got it in the first five minutes. And the rest of those people were like, oh gosh, I forgot. And they got maybe the email from the newsletter or they just remembered. And so they hopped on and, and got theirs. But I really felt like there was enough time. It wasn't like people were getting cart jacked and it was last minute. I have a good number. Uh, it's a number that I can feasibly do every month and do great, you know, because you want it to be great. You don't just want there to be a lot of them. You want it to be amazing. And in order to be able to repeat that every month, it's got to be a reasonable number. So I feel really good about where we are. Thank you. Thank you for choosing my shop. There's lots of options. There's lots of yarn dyers. And whenever you choose mine, I, I just really, really appreciate it. So thanks. Um, Okay, last thing I wanna say on progress and shop news before I share my personal knitting is thank you for your patience and forgiveness with regard to my email response time. If you send me an email that's like, hey, my package isn't here yet, can you check it? I can get on that quickly and I usually am pretty good about those. But emails that have a more thoughtful response, I tend to set them aside until I have time to think about them and then I forget about them. So I am so, so sorry. If you sent me an email, especially if you've sent me a knitting story, thank you. I read every single one. I appreciate every single one. Um, if I don't address it on the podcast or respond in a timely manner, I will respond. It's just a little slow. I need an assistant or like a team of assistants. I have, I have Gigi and I have Alexis when she's home from college, but uh, yeah, I, I could use like a full-time assistant. <laughs> Okay, last time I showed you Char's birthday sweater and Tom's sweater. Your response to Tom in the comments just filled me with joy because Tom is such like a part of the family. Like he's so, he just has his own personality. And sometimes he'll stay in Charlotte's bed for a week and somebody will bring him up and she'll do his voice and then there he is, he's back again. So I showed Tom's sweater last week and I had just started Charlotte's sweater and here's how far I've gotten on it. And what I said was, I'm just making the smallest size. And so she's about to be 10 and she measures, I think, what did I say? Like 27 and a half, 28, 28 and a half around. And the small, and I, this looks perfect to me. I think this is gonna be perfect. And the only reason that I stopped is because I wanted to feather in the next skein. I need one more skein and I had to dye it. See, Fonte, <laughs> I had to dye it. So I wanted to feather it in. So I stopped knitting there so that I could do that. Uh, although she has requested so many things for her birthday that I may end up giving. No, I've got to give it to her for her birthday. I don't know, I got to figure it out. Also, so I've been kind of like hooked on bulky and super bulky knitting after these, the flurry of Timbo vests because it just goes so fast. Like you can get addicted to fast. And it's nice when you pick up that fingering weight project and work on that a little bit. Uh, I did, I did pick up the, uh, what's it called? The shell, traveler shell, that I'm, the Andrea Mowry one that I'm working on. I didn't bring it up here. Um, my frustration with that is that the stitch pattern isn't fun to work. I like a lot of things about it. I could just do it in a different stitch pattern. I'm just thinking about this right now. How cool would it be in the Timbo vest broken rib pattern. Am I, am I saying too many things? I feel like I've talked about these things so many times and hopefully I've put up some pictures so you know what I'm talking about. But that might be nice because it's the stitch pattern that I don't enjoy where it's hard to memorize. It's not very obvious which side is the right side and which is the wrong side. Even after you've you know done a couple inches, it's not that obvious. It's easy to get lost it's just not a fun stitch pattern to work. So I, I still like it though. So maybe I will just change the stitch pattern. Hmm, interesting, I gotta think about that. Also, I wanted to make hats for my daughter and her roommate. My, my daughter, who was at college, did not come home for Thanksgiving. She went to my brother's house and she got to hang out with all of her cousins there. So that was really fun for her, but we missed her. And I thought, 
If I could knit a couple of hats quick, I could get them in the mail before they both go home for Christmas so they could have them together and, you know, do the togetherness thing. So I decided to make my allotrope hat, which is a pattern that I created last winter. And this is such a fun pattern. Also, it used to be $5. Now it is free. If you love a good, um, bulk, super bulky hat pattern, go get the allotrope hat. It is so fast. I mean, you just, you knit it up in a couple of hours. You can count the number of rows. I think there's like 20 rows or rounds and that's it. Uh, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six color work rounds. And it's just, it's so easy. It looks so good on, isn't it just so cute? I really, I love this hat. So I made one out of Black Forest Cake, Trinket and Dusty. And I don't know what colors I'm gonna use for the second one, but I'm just gonna mail it to my daughter and say, pick the one you want and give the other one to your roommate. So um, now I had that, oh, I wanted to tell you that this bag that I have my, my vest in, this is an Atenti bag that I've had forever. Isn't it so cute? It's so peacocky uh, and it opens with a really cool little opener there. So my husband and I last Sunday went back to Culpepper to the Minuteman and I got the bag by, what's it called, Daisy? Daisy Said, I think. I talked about her last week. This is the one that I wanted from before. So on the back, it has writing in like Arabic. Does anybody know what this says? I see a lot of like, smi see the smiley face? <laughs> and then the, this is like, So I don't, I don't know, there it is. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what language this is, but my husband looked up this bag and this was like relief food that, that the United States would deliver to other countries. And it was in lots of languages. This was just one of the languages that made it onto this bag, but it's got these leather side pockets and the bottom is leather uh, and it's got a leather handle and I just loved it. I fell in love with this the first time I saw it at the Bennett Man. So I got in touch with Daisy Said, and she says she doesn't do wholesale orders and her Etsy shop doesn't have anything in it, but uh, you know, keep an eye out. You can follow her on Instagram and tell her what you wanna see more of and maybe she'll hook you up if you're interested in that. And I also got this bag, which is made from vintage quilts. Isn't that, this is also by Daisy Said. Isn't it just awesome? Like you can just imagine this quilt. It has, I don't know, it definitely has machine stitching in the quilt, but this even could be hand stitching. I'm not sure, it's possible. And then I've got all of my little notions and stuff in there. And the inside is canvas, which gives it a good structure. So, um, yeah, so I went a little crazy. I really, I really, I, we went there so that I could get bags. And I also got this one, which is like, it's almost like a yarn bowl, but it's a bag. And this says farmers, cooperative, fertilizer, purchasers, and then it has VA. So it's from Virginia. But again, this is an old bag, like a, a fertilizer bag that has been, repurposed into this awesome like yarn bowl thing. I need to get some to give away because like I can't I can't part with these ones. I love them so much, but I should go back and get a couple to give away because they are so great. I love these bags. It was really fun going and seeing all the ones she had and like I would just pick them up and kind of carry them a little while and I'm like, "Okay, which ones do I need to have? Which ones have to come home with me?" Anyway, that was really fun. Okay, we have today for you a segment that we have not had in a long time. Can you guess what it is? It's crocheting with Gigi. Here she is. Hi, Gigi. Welcome back to the podcast. We were just talking, so we that was a talking, little out of so place. I was like, okay. <laughs> we're sitting on one chair. <laughs> it's a stool. It's not even a chair. It's like one butt cheek each. <laughs> yep, that needed to be said. Okay. So Tell us, what have you been making? I am on? making Christmas presents. You're, you're, you're squishing me off. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I am broke and want to sp save money for college That's, that's and stuff. not true. Gigi no, is just really good at saving her money. She's like the queen of saving. You and Alexis both are super good at that. Good luck with Antonin. Um, <laughs> so we, I am going homemade for Christmas because if you don't like homemade gifts, then you don't like me. Yeah. In which case, why are we even friends? Why are we even friends? Right. <laughs> so here, here. a little there you go. <laughs> context. <laughs> for this is I have a friend at school who also really likes Formula One and so and Ferraris and Ferraris and so this is a Ferrari story isn't it yes okay but sorry. Formula One has a Ferrari team I'll stop interrupting um so Ferrari their team is basically splitting as of the 2025 season very important. It's very important. These two guys, we love them together. And mm -hmm. it's really sad that their team is breaking up. Mm -hmm. So as a farewell gift, he, because his friend is Spanish, he's from Spain, he crocheted him a little chili pepper. Did he make it himself? We don't know. I doubt he it. Gave him it a was a crocheted chili pepper. chili pepper. And it was really sweet mm -hmm. and really sad mm -hmm. and really sentimental. And so for my friend for Christmas, I was like, why don't I make one? And so it's kind of sad, <laughs> but it's a little chili pepper. He is not sad. He is fabulous. No, it's, it's sad because of the context. Like, he's oh. giving it to the guy who's leaving. Yeah. It's sad in that way, but look, it's a he's chili pepper. He's adorable. He's so, so cute. Your friend is going to love that. And so it's a Formula One. It's a sad thing, but mm -hmm. it's also like a reminder. Yeah. You need to put the picture up there. Of Carlos oh, yeah, and Charles yeah. and how yeah. his goodbye gift was yes. this same one. Yes, I will do that. There was sure. a way to buy it, but I was like, I have a mom who knows how to do this. And I know how to do this. Uh, yeah, I didn't help at all. Yeah. I, I really, it's almost unthinkable how little I helped. <laughs> you bought the yarn. I bought the yarn and I sort of helped you find the eyeballs and that was about it. So, yep. so where are you on the rest of your Christmas knitting slash crocheting? Are you crocheting or are you knitting? Um, crocheting because okay. knitting, I, it's so many needles. Crocheting is just easier. It's simpler. It's yeah. simpler. Um, and crocheting is easier to set down for three weeks and then pick back up. Or maybe I'm just not talented enough. Either way. Hmm. Um, I'm making a gingerbread man for Alexis. Mm -hmm. She no, she, she doesn't, doesn't watch this. No, she's she's at college. She doesn't I, have I just for this. I just showed the hat that I made for her too. Oh, cute! <laughs> I'm gonna crochet her a gingerbread man, and I've ripped it out like four times. Do you have a pattern? No, mm. but I'm just <laughs> the judgment in that. Mm, mm. I mean, I'm just saying, like, like I'm sure you just riffed this, right? Yeah. This was no pattern, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, well, but I this just, is pretty simple. But a gingerbread man is that's a lot. But more I know shaping. how to make a bear where you make the legs that come um, out, and I know how to do that. So I figured I'd just do that again. Okay. But then I didn't. I've done the I, start. Stroke. Start over. I did the bear like three years ago, so I sort of remember the pattern. Okay. But I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Oh. And if he's really hideous, he'll just look more homemade, and then <laughs> yeah. she'll like him more. He'll be even cuter. He'll be even yeah. cuter. All right, I can't balance like this. This anymore. is really <laughs> uncomfortable. Okay. All right. Bye. bye. <laughs> All right, the comment section. Lycopodium Obscurum, that's a cool name, says, Oh my word, I was casting on the vest as I clicked on your podcast. My daughter-in-law is most knitworthy. I love knitworthy people and will rock the vest just like you. Thank you for your generous discount. You do not have to apologize that you can't do more. Small businesses need to be supported and I just did my part. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, Gretchen. Thank you so much, Gretchen. Thank you. Thank you. Th I just can't thank you all enough for supporting my small business. You're sending my kids to school. Like <laughs> that's what you're doing. So thank you. I really appreciate it. And I'm so glad you're knitting a Timbo vest. So many of you commented about the Timbo. Lisa said, Devin, your podcast is one of the highlights of my Saturday. I went out of the country and when I got back, I was behind two episodes and I was so excited to be able to watch two back-to-back -back episodes, knowing that another one would be available in just a few days. Such a gift. And she says, I'm absolutely in love with Tom. I hope he will make other appearances on your show. My three grandkids definitely have one in their futures. Thanks for all you share. You are a joy. Thank you so much, Lisa. That was so nice. Tom is really fun to make. He is just so fun. You'll really, really enjoy that. And thank you so much for loving the podcast. I, I, I know that feeling and it's, it's great when you're like, oh, yay. Sharon says, the claymation <laughs> cracks me up. I'm going to knit the vest 
can't resist. While I would love to use your beautiful yarn, when I looked at the amount of yarn required for my size, I decided I'd better use a commercial, budget-friendly yarn for my first one. I'm fairly certain there will be a second one, so after I experiment with the first and work out the fit, I'll splurge on the nice stuff and make another. Thinking about several possible color combos. We'll pray for your dad. Thank you so much for your prayers, and I hope you love the vest for sure. Um, you can always use like Hobby Lobby yarn or a Knit Picks yarn or any kind of budget yarn, especially if you're not sure if you're going to love it. Why not, right? Deb sent a, co a comment that wins my favorite comment of the week. She says, gotta make a Timbo vest and love, love your Tombow vest. <laughs> Tombow vest, Tom's Timbo. Yes. Thank you so much, Deb. That was awesome. Another Deb says, I made a Timbo last year. I love it and I'm going to make another. Mine is all one variegated color. I didn't care for the two-toned on the original, but I like your color choice. You're such a silly willy and it's lots of fun to get a fun laugh. Thank you for sharing. I am a silly willy and I really appreciate you guys just being here for it. Like, <laughs> This is just totally who I am. This is my real personality. My kids are always like, whenever they see somebody crazy, like in a TV show, they're like, that's mom. <laughs> so with regard to the two-toned Timbo vest, here is my hot take, my humble opinion on that. In general, I don't love color blocking. I just, I just don't gravitate towards it. But I think in the case of the Timbo, it just makes it. I don't think that in one color, it will have the same effect. Prove me wrong. Like if you want to make it in all one color, do it, girl. Do whatever you want. But in my humble opinion, I think that part of its charm is the two-toned quality that it has. Linda says, your Timbo vest looks great. I have scrap yarn that I'm going to use. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm a new knitter, so here goes. I'm binding up the balls as we speak. I do have my first sock to finish at the toe before our sock knit along. My book is bound and ready to go. I received my advent box. I don't think I'm gonna be around family this Christmas, so I'm going to choose to open my advent one day at a time to keep me company. Well, that is just great. I'm so happy that it will be there for you to do that and show up here every Saturday because I will keep you company too, Linda. Um, awesome, awesome. I'm so glad you received your advent. I heard from a Canadian that she still hasn't received it, even though it went out weeks ago, because apparently there's a strike. The, the Canadian post is on strike, which I didn't even realize. So dear Canadians, I am so, so sorry that your advent will be delayed. Um, if there are any Canadian post watchers, <laughs> please stop striking. I don't know why you're striking, but please deliver the advents because people need their yarn. Jennifer says, I have a lot of scratchy wool and it's just absolutely gorgeous, but I'm too sensitive and I just don't know what to do with it. I think I'm going to try to make a Timbo vest with it and wear it over turtlenecks. That's a great idea, but I don't have any bulky weight. It's all worsted or smaller, so I'll have to use your fancy spreadsheet to figure out how to use worsted when it calls for bulky. Hopefully I'll have enough yardage because I'm not a small girl anymore. Thank you, menopause. <laughs> well, yes, menopause is real. I totally get it. And I, I just realized that she said, hopefully I have enough yardage because and I left her a comment saying you could hold the worsted double and that would get you to a bulky weight-ish. I would still swatch and you know verify. And you definitely use the gauge worksheet if you wanted. If you go from bulky to worsted, that you'll probably be able to do that fairly simply, depending on what size you are, because you know there's only so many sizes in the pattern, even though the designer has increased it to more sizes. Uh, but I, somebody mentioned to me going from like a bulky to a fingering weight, and because you are jumping so, the, the gauge is going to be so different, the, the the worksheet may not work because you have to have a size that exists in the pattern to make. It might though. So, you know, it's, it's worth trying. All right, moving right along to knitting fantasies. 
I only have one pick for you today because I'm a little short on time, but this is so cute. What I searched for was bulky knitting patterns. Like I said, I'm addicted to bulky. I just love starting and finishing a project super quickly, especially at this time of the year when I'm so busy. The only time I have to knit is when I collapse onto the couch at the end of the day, or if my husband is driving and I'm a passenger, um, or if I'm homeschooling, but even then, like I can't work on Charlotte's vest because she'll see it. So anyway, I'm addicted to bulky. So I chose this adorable vest called the Millie Vest, and it is not bulky, it is super bulky. Yes, so it only comes in one size, but the pattern says it would be easy to adjust, and it does look like that. It looks like it would be super simple to just knit it wider. I imagine that this just, it looks super simple. It looks like it's a back and two fronts, and you just sew them together and then pick up pick up the sleeve band. That's what it looks like to me. So just adding a little, a few more stitches would get you more inches and more sizes. But I just think it's really cute. I would totally wear this. My daughters would steal it. In the front, it, she's got like scraps um, knit in there. It just looks so, so pretty. All right, so here's what happened. Today's knitting story comes to us from a lovely podcast watcher named Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Tammy sent me this on October 27th. So thank you for your patience, Tammy. I really appreciate it. Like I said, back when I didn't have any stories, you guys all sent me one. So thank you for that. Uh, Tammy says, thank, hi, Devin. Thank you again for your wonderful podcast. It truly is my favorite and I never miss an episode. Thank you so much. That is just so great. I'm especially looking forward to the League of Extraordinary Sock Knitters. I already have an alarm set on my phone for November 29th. Hopefully you got in, Tammy. Hopefully you got in. Over a year ago, I sent you a story and you read it on your podcast. This was the story to, um, the story was Best Knitting Friend Forever. And she says, I have a sad update. Shortly after we sent in our story, Stephanie was diagnosed with metastatic cancer. She went through treatments, but on July 29th, she went home to be with Jesus. This story is how friendship and knitting can bring so much joy during difficult times. When Stephanie was in the hospital, I wanted to try and cheer her up, so I knitted the famous frog pattern by Claire Garland. Stephanie named him Freddie. She would take pictures of him in different poses and often I would get a text with a picture of Freddie. The nurses also loved him and took a paper clip to make him a pair of glasses. Once she was out of the hospital and feeling well, she helped me pick out a new puppy named Jeremiah. She also became his daycare provider along with her grand dog and her own three Cavalier King Charles. Next to knitting, dogs and cats were her next love. We eventually resumed our knitting adventures, visiting our local yarn store, volunteering at the Fiber Festival, attending Tuesday Knit Night and other several other activities. When she didn't feel well, we just hung out together at her house, knit and talked about family, friendship, animals, knitting, etc. Stephanie was never someone who would complain. She was an eternal optimist. She would tell me about her recent doctor visit, but then say, okay, now I've told you that, let's talk about other things that are positive and happy. In February, she was feeling down, so she asked her daughter to help plan a Valentine's Day party. She invited family and close friends. We ate Valentine's Day cookies, played games, and laughed together. It's a day that we will all remember, and we plan to have a Valentine's Day party every year now. Stephanie's grandchildren brought her so much joy. She was involved in all of their lives. If she didn't know about the kind of music, sports, or other activities they were involved in, she would research and listen and learn all about it. She would often listen to the music they liked just so that she could connect with them and talk about the latest singer and song. I do that too. <laughs> I watch like the Gen Z podcast so that I can like talk to my kids and like, you know, understand, like know what they know. 
her grandchildren called her Nami. One of our Saturday get-togethers, we were looking at a fashion magazine and saw a beautiful crocheted granny square hood attached to a sweatshirt. Neither of us were huge fans of granny squares and she could not crochet, but this caught our eye. I decided that I wanted to figure out how to make something similar but more versatile. We discussed the design and she helped me with picking out yarn. During the process, I decided to write up the pattern and post it on Ravelry. She was able to see the final sample and approve of the pattern name. The pattern is called the Nami Square Hood, and I went on to create the Nami Square Mitts. Both of these are in memory of her and our special friendship. Devin, because you have allowed me to share my stories, I have gifted you the patterns. Thank you so much for that, Tammy. I did receive those. I really, really appreciated it. That goes into the category of wonderful things that have come into my inbox that I have not yet responded to. So thank you, thank you. Tammy says, because of Stephanie's deep love for her grandchildren, she wanted to knit baby items for each of them to give to their first child. I don't think she was able to finish all of them as well as her other whips, but I told her I would continue to work on them for her family. Every time I pick up a project she started, I still feel connected to her. After she passed away, her daughter found a devotional in Our Daily Bread. It talks about a woman who passed away before she could finish a sweater and someone from a volunteer organization called Finishers completed the project that's like the Loose Ends project that we talked about, I don't know, a couple of months ago. I didn't realize there was more than one of these groups that will finish projects started by someone before they died. They do knitting projects, sewing projects. I'll link whatever information I have down below in case you're interested in that. The article, uh, Tammy says, it went on to say that as believers in Jesus, we've been called to share God's love with others and declare his praises. Though, though the tasks may outlive us too, we can be assured that he'll sustain the work and continue to call other finishers to the sacred work of making him known. That is awesome. Stephanie definitely knew how to share God's love unconditionally, and I pray that I can do the same. Stephanie loved Jesus, and I imagine someday we will both be in heaven with our mansions next to each other. We will take our lawn chair out to the street of gold. We will sit there and knit and wait for Jesus to take his morning stroll and stop by to admire our knitting. Thank you again for letting me share. What a beautiful, beautiful story. Stephanie sounds like the kind of person that I would have just loved to hang out with, the kind of person we all would have loved to hang out with. Um, both of you sound like that. This is a wonderful, wonderful story. And what a blessing to have a friend like that. What a huge, huge blessing. Thank you so much for sharing it, Tammy. If you have a knitting story, send it to me, devin at knittingmcpearly.com, devin with an I. Uh, all that stuff is linked down below. If you ever forget it, I always have it down in the information box below the video. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week back at work. And thank you again for being patient with your orders. They are coming. I'm working on them as quickly as I can. Have a wonderful week and I will see you here next Saturday. Bye knitters.